Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Laura Fortman. I'm the Commissioner of the Maine Department of Labor, and I'm joined by my colleague. Hi, I'm Kim Smith. I'm the Deputy Commissioner. And we are hosting our uh, usual Friday afternoon briefing. Unfortunately, uh, this is not being live streamed. There was some problem with the uh, connection to Facebook, but this is being recorded and it will be posted on our website immediately after uh, the briefing today. So we wanted to cover a couple of uh, key issues. Um, I think that the issue that's primarily on uh, everyone's mind today is around the Lost Wages Assistance Program, which is the $300 from FEMA. We'll go through a couple of slides on that. We'll give you an update on our um, the progress that we've made on uh, paying initial uh, claimants, um, also provide a little bit of data around that, and um, talk about work search activities again, and then do a, a review of all of the different unemployment insurance programs. Um, so that's the agenda for this afternoon, and I think we'll just kind of jump right in and start talking about the Lost Wage Assistance Program. So, as we've said for the um, past two weeks, this is the program of supplemental funds coming through the Federal Emergency Management Agency. The, um, the kind of most critical piece of information is that the first round of payments will be issued tonight. Um, we will be um, making a payment for weeks ending August 1st. August 8th and August 15th. So those three payments will all go out this evening. As a reminder, um, this is not an unemployment insurance program. This is a separate program that was established um, to uh, provide benefits to people who are eligible for unemployment benefits, and that could be either state unemployment or one of the federal unemployment um, programs, the, in order to be eligible, you must be um, eligible for at least $100 in benefits from one of those unemployment insurance programs, and you must be unemployed or partially unemployed as a direct result of COVID-19. <clears throat> um, the, we will be using information that has already been provided, and we'll go into that a little bit more in the next slide. Uh, you may have seen in the news that FEMA has announced that uh, the states that have been approved for the program will receive six weeks of funding, and then the program ends. So we have um, been approved for six weeks. We're paying the first three tonight, so the first the 8th and the 15th of August, and then next week we will make the payments for August 22nd, 29th, and September 5th, and then the program is over. Again, this is a FEMA program, it is not an unemployment insurance program. Um, we anticipate that that second round of payments will go out sometime midweek next week, and again, in a lump sum. So, um, Kim, I don't know if you want to walk through who might need to take action and who might not. Sure, I'd be happy to. So, if you are um, receiving state unemployment benefits, if you're receiving the PEUC, the Pandemic Emergency Unemployment Compensation Benefits, or the state extended benefits, and you have already indicated that you are out of work due to COVID, you won't need to do anything extra other than continue filing your weekly certification. Also, if you are someone who is receiving the PUA, Pandemic Unemployment Assistance, you are also considered out of work due to COVID and therefore uh, don't need to take any other action. There are a few individuals who are on um, state programs or the PEUC program, for instance, that have not said that they are out of work due to COVID. We will be notifying these individuals. They will receive a letter from us. They will get that in the mail as well as they will see it in their reemployment account under the correspondence that will um, tell them what steps they need to do in order to see if they are qualified for uh, the LWA benefits. And even those folks, they do not need to call us 
we will be reaching out to them Correct. directly. And uh, all of the information that you would need in order to um, complete your eligibility uh, um, for LWA will be contained in that letter. So please uh, look for it, uh, a letter from us um, and please follow the directions that will be included in that. And as the commissioner said um, just a few minutes ago, the LWA is a FEMA program. It's not an unemployment program, so the eligibility requirements are a little different. So that's why we are sending this letter out to um, to ask people the, the, the COVID-related questions again. Because the eligibility is different, we will not be using the responses to those questions uh, to determine any unemployment eligibility. Okay, and we will have information on the website as well, which is uh, always, uh, you know, probably one of the best places to, to access information quickly. Um, we have been asked questions about um, a report that uh, we had referenced a few weeks ago um, by the Century Foundation. Uh, the Century Foundation has a website and a dashboard that is focused uh, on unemployment insurance. And you may remember back in March, March and April, um, Maine was listed in the top six of states for um, paying out unemployment benefits. Uh, they've recently updated their dashboard um, through, I believe, July at this point, and um, Maine, again, continues to rank as uh, number six in the country for the percentage of claims that are being paid. Um, and we've included the uh, website on here as well so that people can uh, look at their at their dashboard. They have a, a variety of pieces of information. Um, but again, for benefits paid, um, Maine continues to rank at the top. And as uh, we've consistently said since the beginning of the pandemic, uh, we've had two priorities, making sure that benefits are paid as quickly as possible to people who are eligible um, for it. And that continues to be our primary goal. I want to walk through, speaking of um, paying benefits, uh, you know, we've seen this chart change over the last primarily eight, seven or eight weeks um, as we have continued to get benefits out to people. As of the week, um, as of September 9th, we have paid out benefits um, to about 137, almost 138,000 people. Um, there are about uh, uh, 9,900 people who have not filed a weekly certification. Um, we have about 2% of the folks, about uh, 3,000 folks who are um, flagged uh, as currently ineligible for benefits and um, about 0.2% uh, of folks who are flagged as potentially fraudulent and then about 900 people who are currently um, waiting in the process of having their claims process. I, I do want to just note that this is the first time um, that we have been under 1,000 people being processed. And if you look at that dark blue bar across the bottom, you see that every week there are at least 1,000 people who are um, currently processed. So this 900 um, person mark is a significant one for us. Um, this screen, this breaks down the, the 900 folks who are remaining, uh, showing you which category that they are in. Uh, still 363, the majority of them are waiting for fact finding. Uh, we have 307 individuals who have been denied for state unemployment that are in the process of moving to the PUA program. We have 87 people who are considered their claim is relatively new. We're waiting for information from their previous employer before we can complete their claim. And then we have 166 individuals who are in pending status. And this means that we had a mismatch either in their, their name that we got back from Social Security Administration didn't match or there were issues with wages that they reported on their claim that we didn't have in their system or vice versa. So um, to dig in a little bit on the fact-finding uh, bucket of, of folks, as you can see uh, from the, um, the chart that's up there, 
uh, March and April, there, there's no one left in fact finding from there. We have one person in May, 11 in June, 21 in July. Uh, the bulk of the uh, fact findings are from August and September, and August is uh, 232, and September is 98. Uh, so we are uh, getting to that place where this is within a getting to a normal processing time. Again, these are initial claimants who um, uh, we're, we're focusing on here. Our goal is to make sure that everyone uh, has received at least one benefit payment uh, after that they have applied. Um, we, as you know, um, have reinstated work search activities for people who are permanently separated from their employers. Uh, we did this for the week beginning August 9th. Um, and uh, anyone in, who is permanently separated from their employer must be engaged in work search activities and register on the main job link in order to continue to maintain their unemployment um, eligibility. We have broadened the kinds of activities that count as work search activities. Uh, our um, career centers are offering a variety of online opportunities for folks, including uh, an interactive workshop to walk people through how they can register um, for the main job link and how to best use that job link to uh, really take advantage of all of the options um, that are available there. We are continuing to do outreach to um, people who are um, filing for unemployment and letting them know about the work search requirements. Um, we're reminding folks uh, we do the first time that someone misses um, completing their work search requirements, we do send them um, a, a letter um, just letting them know uh, that uh, this is one of the requirements of the program and including information about how, um, what activities are considered as acceptable to participate uh, in, in as they're looking for work. And we do have information on the website about um, questions that we've been asked about work search, what's included, how do you go about it. Also earlier this week we sent an email to claimants um, with this information, with links to the Career Center site and uh, suggestions for things that would fall into the, the work search activities category. And we have included uh, examples of work search that are, you know, these are just some of the types of workshops that are happening next week um, and want to make sure that people are aware of them, particularly things around job preparation or resume workshops. I know that the pandemic, um, you know, some people thought that they were going to be going back to their employer and have since learned that that is not going to be a possibility. We've, and they may not have an, uh, an up-to-date resume. This is a good opportunity to just get some tips and um, polish off your resume um, as you're uh, beginning your work search. And one of the reasons that we think it's so important and we've been stressing uh, work search recently is on the next slide. And I think, Kim, you're going to walk us through what's happening with the different unemployment insurance mm -hmm. programs and perhaps some dates that people need to be very aware of. Yes. And I just wanted to add those workshops that we showed on the previous slide are recurring workshops. That they happen every week. Those were just the dates that they're happening next week. Right. And they are virtual. They are so, virtual, and that those are just four of the many that are offered on the, the Career Center website. So we showed this graphic last week, but we thought it was important to show again um, that there, there are two parallel tracks that an individual would be on one or the other. Um, anyone who is eligible for state unemployment would be on the top track, so they would be eligible for state UI first, and that's up to 26 weeks. If they get to the point of exhausting those 26 weeks, they could move into the PEUC program, which is up to 13 weeks, and that runs through December 26. If they exhausted those 13 weeks, then they would move into the EB program. So as far as dates, you know, we're working with folks who have been out of work potentially back to March 15th. 
So those 26 weeks would actually end tomorrow if they uh, selected all 26 weeks. Then they would be moving into the PEUC program, which would take them through uh, December 12th, um, and then potentially into the EB program after that. For people who are not eligible for state UI, they would have moved into the PUA program if they were out of work because of COVID. So their 39 weeks, if they were going back to March, would run through December 12th. So um, I also wanted to point out if somebody wasn't out of work right away back in March, if it was in April or later, they may not get all of the 13 weeks of PEUC or all of the 39 weeks of PUA because the program does end on December 26th. And we just really wanted to um, make sure that everyone understood these dates. Um, and the importance of um, of the uh, of, of looking for additional work, because one of the concerns is that, um, in, as you remember from early on when we first started talking about unemployment um, insurance, there's a monetary eligibility requirement. So that means that you must have earned a certain amount of wages over base periods in order to be eligible for unemployment insurance. And as these um, unemployment insurance benefits run out, um, unless Congress takes additional action, uh, people might not have the required earnings available in order to um, be eligible for unemployment insurance next year if they, if they needed it. So we're hoping that nobody falls into that category and we will be working closely with uh, everyone um, to make sure that you're available of all of the reemployment services that may help you um, go transition into the workforce. And um, I think that's it. Uh, as part of that, um, we're we're doing a couple of things. One is, as we had mentioned a few weeks ago, um, well, I guess it was a longer than that. Um, back in January, the Department of Labor was looking at ways that we could enhance uh, the claimant um, user experience. Uh, we are, at that time in January, we were gathering information uh, that the National Employment Law Project had provided through focus groups um, that met in Portland and Brewer. Uh, a lot of that activity was put on hold while we were um, kind of immersed in the much more uh, critical and immediate need of making sure that we were getting benefits out to people. Uh, we are beginning to re-look re at some of the um, projects we began earlier and we are taking some uh, steps to re-engage uh, with claimants to improve the user experience. Um, our next step is we're, uh, we've identified a randomized sample of unemployment claimants. So again, not everyone, a small sample. Um, and we will be doing a survey and using that information as we continue to uh, try to improve our services. Uh, to the people of the state of Maine. So I think that's about it that we have in the prepared slides. I think we have some questions um, that we can... Um... So there was a request to include the link in the chat box. I'm assuming that was the link for the Century Foundation, given that that was one of the first questions. Yep. And we'll put that in the chat, certainly. Uh, so the next question, if someone received at least $100 in PUA the week of August 1st, will they still qualify for LWA even if they went back to work later in August? So yes, that is true. So PUA, the minimum weekly benefit is 172, so they definitely meet that first criteria. If they are on PUA, we have already determined that they are out of work due to COVID. And even if they have gone back um, to work since, if they were eligible um, for any of the weeks between August 5th and September, August 1st and September 5th, they would be eligible for the LWA. Okay, if we have cases <clears throat> reaching back into June, can you give us an update on where in the party chart they may? Uh, Senator, it would depend on their individual case. So it's not that everybody from June falls into a particular 
um, slice of the pie uh, chart, but if you want to uh, reach out to me with particular questions about individual claimants, I'd be happy to provide whatever information I can to you, but not, we can't do that in this forum. Oh, I know. I just meant, I meant from a systems perspective, I know the backlog of legislative questions about constituents was so large for so long that it was impossible to know what the status of a particular case was until it was resolved because you were just working through the best that you could. Um, now that that backlog is, is significantly reduced and you've been able to identify who's in what buckets, what I, what I meant was not just on behalf of me, but some of the other legislators as well, um, particularly given that June's number is so small, would it be possible for those that haven't yet been resolved in June, just to let us know this one's waiting fact finding or this one is in this place. And, and again, Senator, yes, we could, but again, it would be based on the individual constituents. Sure. But yeah, we can do that. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So we have a question. How long do PUA recipients typically wait for back pay after their benefits have been redetermined? Uh, typically, once this is somebody who needs to send in uh, documentation of their income so that we can adjust their weekly benefit amount. Typically that happens within five to seven days. Concerns related to eligibility for 2021. Sure, do you want to pull that slide back up? <clears throat> so again, this is work case scenario. Um, but we thought it was important to flag it that if you started um, receiving unemployment benefits for the week ending March, I'm looking over here because the calendar, March 21st, March 21st, in that first week, yeah. right, that that group of people will be um, exhausting, assuming they were eligible for all 26 weeks, not everybody is, but we're using that that they would um, be exhausting the UI benefits in tomorrow, for the week ending tomorrow. Then they would be moving into PEUC, and PEUC is one of the federal programs, so typically that 13 weeks would not be available to people. It was a special program that was put in place. And uh, if they moved into that program and were eligible for all 13 weeks, that eligibility would end on December um, 12th, and then they would move into the extended benefit program. Extended benefits are a state unemployment insurance program that only is, um, is triggered when the unemployment rate is at a certain level. So, um, that program, if you're eligible for it, will stay in effect until January. I'm trying to see. Well, if you collected all of the 13 weeks, I didn't count out how many, right. where 13 weeks takes us to, uh, as long as the program remains in effect, right? Uh, you would be eligible for the up to 13 weeks. But when that exhausted, there are no other unemployment insurance benefits that you would be eligible for. And in order to re-qualify, we would be looking at what your earnings were in the previous two quarters. And if you had no earnings in those previous two quarters, that, that's, that's the concern. Yeah, that's our concern, is that if there's no earnings going back to March, someone would not likely be eligible for a new benefit year. Unless, again, Congress took some action. So there was a question about how many people have already received the warning letters uh, about work search, and I would have to um, look at that as not a number I know off the top of my head. Thank you. And and the question. question is coming from is I just want to, um, and I'm sure you're looking at this, but just figure out how many people, you know, may either not be comprehending work search or for whom that's creating a barrier, creating a a drop off for them. Yep, we have, and that's we're very aware of that, which is why we're 
um, sending uh, not just a uh, a kind of a warning, but we also sent out a reminder to um, about 70,000 uh, people two nights ago, I think night. Wednesday night, <laughs> as just a, a reminder through email. And then the question is, how much earnings would someone have to demonstrate in each quarter? 1,700. Um, there's a couple of different criteria. So it's the, the typical monetary eligibility, but there's also another requirement, and this is a test, okay. test of my memory, that you have to have earned at least eight times your weekly benefit amount in the last year um, in order to qualify for a due benefit year. But I would want to um, verify that in statute before I um, affirm that. And we can post that information as well. It's on there yep. as well. Oh, I don't see other questions. So uh, again, um, Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Um, if there are no questions, I think we'll we'll wrap it up, and um, we will um, also be looking at moving these briefings to an every other week, um, uh, and uh, keeping the same time. But thank you very much. So, Thank you, and uh, again, today is uh, September 11th, which is a uh, solemn day of remembrance, uh, I think, for the, the entire country, and I do want to just take a moment to acknowledge that as well. <laughs>